So the last step here of our map is to you know, plot particular coordinates onto the map. If you do have a data set with GPS data available already, you know, that, that makes things a lot easier. You can just import that data into R and then plot them um, on whatever map you, you need to plot them. Um, however, I want to visualize here the location of certain um, universities in the Berlin and Brandenburg area, the surrounding of Berlin. Um, I don't have a data set um, containing these longitude and latitude um, coordinates, so I'm just creating one here. Uh, there's the FU Berlin, Potsdam, HU Berlin, TU Berlin, they're all universities in the area, and these are particular coordinates that I looked up through OpenStreetMap, right? For example, let's see if we find anything for the free university. And again, we can get coordinates here at the GPS coordinates, longitude and latitude. All right, I'm creating these four vectors, each one being the GPS coordinate for a particular university, the data frame. That way, they actually all numbers, except for the university, which is a character variable. So now, comes a really important step. We have our map of Berlin already, and um, we've, we've plotted it before using the ggmap function, and we input our saved images here. All we do now is use our beloved G, um, ggplot approach to um, plot particular locations onto the map. And this is fairly easy. We use the geom point because we want dots and we're going to give it the we're going to define the x and the y axes x being the longitude and y being the latitude value and we're going to give geom point the data source which is our uni's data set right so what we're doing here is use images from the gg map to plot the background map and then using geom uh, geom point to plot individual plots coming from a different data frame onto this particular map. And, and this is possible because you can define new sources of data within the ggplot environment. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Now we see four dots here for the locations of the university. Now let's increase the size a little bit. And this is really done as we have been doing it in previous sessions when we customized our standard bar charts, scatter plots, and so forth. So we're going to increase the size here and we're actually going to also add some text with the geom text uh, function. We're going to label it with the name of the university, adjust the location a little bit. Okay, that looks better. Points are a little bigger and we now also have the name of the university. So all I'm doing now is customizing the map using the tools that I introduced in previous sessions. They're the same tools that we use to produce scatter plots bar charts with the common um, ggplot environment, right? Um, so we're gonna change the color, we're gonna add some labels, we're gonna uh, change the, um, take away actually the labels of the axes. Okay. As always, this code is online in the online um, course, so don't worry if you're missing some of these lines here. And there we are. Um, this is our first awesome map. It's universities in the region, and we're going to actually vary the size of each university by the number of students. I should quickly show you how we did that. Um, we indicated here in the geom point in the size arguments that the size should equal the students. Students is a separate variable in our unit data frame, right? So we can have the size vary by the number of students. We also change the color here to red. Now let's just briefly change the look of it. I'll show you the toner look earlier. If we apply that, if we apply that and run it, it would look somewhat like this. It's also pretty nice, right? This is our first map. Before we end, I want to highlight an alternative to the ggmap function that works in some instances, uh, which is the QM plot. Um, with the ggmap, we've seen that we either have to feed it 
a certain name of a place and it gets the coordinates automatically, or we feed into it some coordinates or, or a bounding box and then it uh, downloads the, the maps that we need. And then onto that background, we plot whatever we need to plot there. The GM plot works a little differently uh, in that it can actually build the map based on coordinates that we have available in our existing data set. So remember, um, we created this data frame called unis and it includes um, longitude and latitude coordinates for uh, four different universities in the Berlin um, uh, surroundings, right, in the Berlin area. Now, QMplot can basically look at this data frame and say, what map do I need that allows me to fit all of the different dots into it, right? So we use QMplot function and we define again the x-axis and the y-axis as the longitude and latitude variables in the data set. And we're going to define which data set we're going to use, which is called unis. We define the map type. We define the geom within the QMplot um, Function. You see now how this is quite different from the ggplot approach. We're going to let the color of each dot vary by the number of students we have at each university. Remember, this is a separate variable here in our uni's data frame. And we're going to uh, change the size. And also, we're going to sort of choose this, the, the color gradient that we use for smaller to, to higher, uh, depending on the number of students, right? We're going to choose here blue for low and, and red for high. So if you run that, we get this beautiful map. It looks quite similar to what we've done before. It's just a separate approach. So I wanted to make sure to highlight this. Again, as I said in the introduction, there are a lot of ways and different packages to, to, to use in R to produce maps. So I've just mentioned two of them for now.